Hello. I go by the screen name Real Mail, and I'm the forum moderator of the And Engine forums. But I didn't actually create And Engine. Nicholas Gramlich is the creator of And Engine. But this video will get you started on how to use And Engine. First of all, you need to download the latest Java JDK. Then you need to download the latest Android SDK and you can click this button here to get the Android SDK. What that will do is it'll download a zip file to your computer and it'll be called ADT Bundle Windows x86 or if you chose a Mac version you'll see that listed as the name of what you downloaded. This will initially download as a zip file and you need to uh, extract it. it. You can extract it anywhere you want on your computer and when you do you can open it up and see inside that there's an Eclipse folder and an SDK folder. And what's great is that Android included Eclipse along with their SDK, so you do not have to download Eclipse separately. So if we open up Eclipse, launch it, you'll see that it prompts you to choose a location for your Eclipse workspace. Again, you can choose any location you want for your workspace, but remember which location you choose because we're going to be navigating to the workspace a lot here. Choose the path for your workspace, click the button so that it remembers your choice, click OK. And Eclipse will load with a welcome screen. You can close this screen and you see the default interface of Eclipse. There are a couple of quick setups that I like to do in Eclipse when I've installed Eclipse for the first time. First of all, down here I like to have a uh, progress tab. So to get that, I'll go to show view, progress. That will show you the progress of how Eclipse is processing your project whenever you're making changes. Another thing I like to do is be able to see the line numbers in my code. So to do that, you go to editors, text editors, and choose show line numbers. And the last thing I like to do is a quick configuration is you go to the DDMS perspective. This is kind of your debugging perspective. And you'll see down here there's a logcat tab. I like to bring that up to here amongst these tabs. And right now I have my phone connected to Eclipse and you can see it's showing everything that's happening on my phone as it happens and so this log cat in the DDMS tab here is what will show you what's happening in your game that you're building as you run your game it'll help you with debugging. So I'm going to go back to the Java perspective and you see this blank over here on the side we need to import and engine and to do that you can either grab and engine and all the extensions from Nicholas Gramlich's GitHub repository, or you can grab them from my repository, which is GitHub slash RealMail. The advantage to grabbing them from my repository is I've worked out any bugs that are in the code, and it's a more stable version than what you'll find in Nicholas Gramlich's version. However, if you want the latest and greatest, albeit with a few bugs, then the latest versions can be found in Nicholas's GitHub. Again, my version uh, is a stable version so you know that you won't have any errors if you go for my version. So you want to click on repositories and you'll see a whole list of and, and engine and uh, extensions related to and engine. You need to grab all of these and save them to your computer. So we'll start at the top. If you're familiar with Git functionality you can use this git address and import these into Eclipse using git but the easiest way is to use zip if you're not comfortable with git so I'm just going to click the zip button and you'll see it's downloading the zip file of these end engine examples to my computer and I'm going to go back to the main and click on repositories again and grab the next item so you have to download the zip files for all these. Actually, it's better to hit the back button because it brings you right back to where you are, obviously. And just keep grabbing all of the 
items you see here. Okay, so once you've downloaded all the zip files for all of these extensions, then you'll have a list of all the zip files you downloaded in your downloads folder and you need to extract all these zip files. You can extract these zip files anywhere you want and I already extracted a copy of all of them to here. So I've got all of the, I've got and engine itself and all of the extensions all extracted out of the zip files all in one place. Again, it doesn't matter where you chose to extract them to. So now we're going to go back into Eclipse and we're going to import all of these. So you go to File, Import, you choose General, and then Existing Projects. Next, Browse, and you have to find the location on your computer where you down where you extracted all those zip files to. So I've got all of mine here, as you can see. And I'm just going to choose the parent folder where all of the extensions are on my computer, and I'm going to click OK. It lists all of the extensions here. I'm going to click Finish, and everything is now imported into Eclipse. We do have some errors. There's some errors uh, listed down here. And the reason why it says that it's unable to resolve target Android 15 is even though we downloaded the Android SDK, we still did not incorporate the SDK into Eclipse. And so to do that, you have to go to this icon right here, which is the Android SDK Manager. Click that. And you'll see a list of all of the Android OS versions and the corresponding API numbers as well as some Android development tools and we need to install everything from the most the latest API which right now it's API 17 but whatever the latest API is that you see you want to install it from there all the way down to API 8 unfortunately and engine does not work on phones that are running API 7 or less. Android only works with API 8 or greater. So if we expand each of these we can see what is installed and what is not installed. And we have the SDK platform for API 17 installed and the system image installed as well. I have installed a few of these ahead of time um, but what you also need to install are the Google APIs for each of these. So that's for API 17. Let's expand API 16. None of these are installed. We need to install the SDK platform, the system images. You don't need this one though. And you want the Google APIs. And then we'll go to the next one. Again, the SDK platform, the system images, the Google APIs. So you need to do that for each of these API levels. Check all these off. And once you've checked them all off, you can click the install button to install everything that you've chosen. And again, you want to install everything, as I've shown here, from API 17 down to API 8. Okay, now that you've downloaded all the Android APIs into Eclipse, or you've installed them all, you're still going to see some errors. And one common error you're going to see is the compiler is wrong. And to solve that, we need to right click on each of these extensions and choose Properties, navigate to Compiler, check off this box for Enable Project Specific Settings, and change the compiler to be 1.6. Click OK and it wants to rebuild the project, that's fine. And we have to do that for each of these properties. Compiler, check the box, 1.6, OK and yes. 
So keep doing that for each of these. Now you're still going to see errors on many of these and the way to resolve the remaining errors is right click on each one, go back to properties, go to Android and you'll see all the API levels but if you scroll down you see a library section and you see an X next to AND engine. What we need to do is remove this entry and then click add and add end engine back in. What this is doing is it is having the this particular extension include end engine as a library item. So right here we're specifying where end engine is in this path. So now I've got a green check mark, we're good to go, we'll click OK. And we need to do that for each of these properties. Android, scroll down, remove the entry, add end engine back in. Now you'll note that the debug draw extension, when you look at its properties, it's mentioning and engine and also the physics box CD extension. So we need to remove both of those and add both of those back in here. And finally, the end engine examples, when you look at that one, you'll see that it pretty much mentions almost all of the extensions that it needs linked to it as library items. So you need to remove all of these and then add all of them back in again. Okay, once you've got all of them added back in, click OK and you'll see it's processing here if you're in the progress tab and all the processing is finished and we have no more errors on anything. At this time you're ready to run the examples on your phone so make sure you connect your phone to your computer via USB cable and when you're ready right click on the examples choose run as Android application and it's going to launch the examples to your phone And once it, once it launches to your phone, it may show a pop-up saying, do you want to monitor log cat output? Um, you could choose either choice, but the point is that when it's running on your phone, or even when your game that you're building is running on your phone, you can go to the DDMS perspective and watch everything that's happening on your phone. And you see that there are a few filters here. You can choose to monitor a particular application or a particular game instead of monitoring everything that's happening on your phone. So if I click on the examples here and click on the examples here, I'm only monitoring what's happening in the examples. Again, this is great for debugging purposes. And that's it. You are now up and running with End Engine. If you need more help or have any questions, I urge you to come to the forums and post any questions you have. What I showed you right now is and Engine GLES 2, so if you have any questions, post them in this section of the forum, and there's a great community on here that'll help you. Otherwise, if you want to learn more about and Engine, you can buy this new and Engine book that was authored by a few members from the End Engine forums. And it's a great book to pick up to learn more. Thank you.